are you feeling about this game? I'm not feeling good. I'm feeling very defeated. Like we should just celebrate all we can for the rest of these days this week before getting handled in San Francisco. I think the one area that concerns me is the Cowboys run defense and Christian McCaffrey. I think that's an area that I would be a little concerned at. And then I think Debo Samuel, you've got to have an answer for him, right? But I told Bobby, and Bobby, you can vouch for this, mm-hmm. heading into the Tampa Bay Bucks game, I was listening to everyone. I thought, oh, there's no way the Cowboys can pull this off. They've never beat Tom Brady. Tom Brady didn't give up his wife and children to go home <laughs> because of the Cowboys. <laughs> no, he didn't. But getting closer, I said, I don't know, guys. I feel like this is going to be, I think they're going to pull this one off. And I think if they can play the way that they did in Tampa, because it's, I always tell my dad, because my dad's a massive fan, it's one thing to watch it on TV, it's another to be there. It felt electric. It felt, you could feel the momentum. And I was kind of laughing, Dak Prescott, uh, noted Taylor Swift fan, apparently, because ahead of the game, he's like, hi, it's me, the no problem. No wonder you love hi, the him, pro- yeah. What's that song, the anti-hero? It's, it's me. Yeah. He was, <laughs> he, he was jamming that hard. He was jamming that hard while I was on the sidelines. And so... I don't know. I just feel like they kind of put it all together, except for Brett Maher. And uh, I think they could pull this one off. You do. I really do. Difference between them, like, as a team this year compared to last year, heading into the 49er game. Like Bobby had said that they wanted to be tougher. They wanted to get more physical. Debo and Trent Williams came out and... You know, set the tone with the boom box for stomping the Cowboys in their own stadium. Do you think this team is much different, Cowboys? I do. I think particularly when you look at the last couple of years, that's why uh, when people were bringing up you specifically, bring up Mike McCarthy's job security, which I understood why you asked the question. Right? I'm glad you brought it. this Wait up because he was okay. going to. All right, let's get this straight. <laughs> I, I, I understand why we all have a job to do, right? Yes. And you love to get yourself on ESPN on NFL Network. <laughs> Wow. They're finally saying your name right instead wow. of instead of Shan. It's Sean. Wow. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, can we just let this guy have one playoff game? And people forget. I know people say, "Woe is me." Get your violins out. All the injuries, but they've been injured at every single starting position. And to have the record they have, particularly in the East, when you've got three of these teams in the postseason, they went from least to beast. I just think it says a lot about Mike McCarthy. I didn't want to get rid of Mike. We love Mike. Mike he, he's so much better than Jason for a decade. Mike's turnaround with the media has been amazing in this last year. We had, they allowed us into this like off the record meeting. Finally, I was able to get in there with the beat reporters at Combine. And we had this really great discussion. I got to tell you, it, it humanized him. And I think he's humanized himself to the players, to the media. And I feel like he's settled in here because it is so different than Green Bay. I mean, I'll never yeah. forget when Randall Cobb, was here, he said, man, you guys have playoff media here every single day. And I cover other teams. It is different in Dallas. And I just think he's done a really good job of getting this team ready to go, sort of even going back to the drawing board himself. And so roundabout way of answering your question, I think they learned a lot from that game against San Francisco. And this is their opportunity to sort of return the favor. It's it's easy to get to be in a good mood when you win 12 games a year. Right. Right. You should be in a good mood. I want to do an Ask Slater on the truckwork.com text line. Okay. 877. Like those influencers are like, I've got a few minutes. Ask me a few questions. Just anything. <laughs> AMA. AMA. 877-881-1053. I'm going to rely on RJ and Bobby to filter some of the questions. But Jane uh, will, will a lot of times answer anything. So I just want to do an Ask Slater. And then Greg Olson at 8 o'clock here on The Fan. Well, and as we wait for these to pour in, uh, is there, is there, do you want to rebuttal? Yeah, I do to- want to rebuttal. <laughs> so you call, you, you, you gave me the backhanded compliment. I appreciate you saying my name on TV while also saying a uh, premature question. But then after the game. You never struggle with anything premature. Yeah. You? Whoa! <laughs> yes! You sure about that? I might need that. <laughs> I might need your iced coffee uh, instead of this. <laughs> so after the game, you then asked Jerry about Sean Payton. So how's what you did well, not worse was, than what I did? it was tongue in cheek. It was a joke because we have to – did you guys run that? That's kind of funny. Hell yeah, yeah, I ran it. I was. I didn't know how many people caught that. Cause yeah. At, we were – there was a massive media scrum. And then when we came, it was me and Deuce. And I, I love when he said he didn't want to talk to Deuce. He wanted to talk to Sam. Sam's great. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, obviously Jerry was in a great mood. And I just said to him, can we finally, at least for this season, put the Sean Payton talk to rest? Because I've said to everyone, by the way, 
I can tell you, the Cowboys did not reach out to Sean Payton at all all this season about that job. So it's not like they've been like, hey, just giving you something here on the side, Sean, if this doesn't pull off. And then everyone kept saying Mike McCarthy had a three-year deal. He doesn't. He's got a couple more years left on that one. So if they, oh, I mean, they'd have to pay him out if they were going to move on. But Peyton, people may be calling for Ash Slater as well. So pick up this phone and let's see if we can put some people on the, on the line. So if they lost 26 to 6 to the Bucks, just like they did to the Commanders, do you think that McCarthy's job was in question? No. Never. Zero. I still think to get to get by without your starting quarterback again, five different offensive line combos, to lose your two starting corners, to lose. Your linebacker and Leighton Vander Esch. You lost defensive linemen. You didn't have Tony Pollard for one game. Didn't have Dalton Schultz for a few. Yeah. Michael Gallup took a long. You didn't have wide receivers to start the season. Yes. And to get them where they where they and they didn't exactly play. They played some tough competition this year. You're, the resume is there. I mean, look, the back half of the season was ugly when you're going up against some of these backup quarterbacks. The way, but you know. Talk about the defense a little bit. Defense sort of struggled there because they didn't have, but I also think it allowed them to sort of see what they had there, particularly when we looked at what Dan Quinn did uh, with the four safeties and then the offensive line, them deciding, hey, we're going to make a change here. Go with the jumbo pack again with Connor McGovern. So I think they were kind of tinkering with things while they could.